Hello and welcome to Plagiarism 101. What is plagiarism and how to avoid it? I'm Professor Linda Coppici from Collin College. First of all, what is plagiarism? Plagiarism may be intentional, but is oftentimes unintentional. Due to failing to quote or cite, or paraphrasing and not citing, or failing to add both parts of a citation system. The key idea today will be to cite all borrowed material in two parts. Possible consequences for plagiarism in the United States include possible investigations, Fs on an assignment, a possible F in the course, or possible expulsion from the institution. What are several types of plagiarism? I've categorized them into three parts today. The first part is called patchwork or mosaic plagiarism. This includes the writer piecing together his or her own thoughts with borrowed material and the reader is unclear which is which. Secondly, flagrant plagiarism is where a person intentionally borrows other people's thoughts and does not give them credit. And finally, self-plagiarism is recycling one's own paper in a different class. What does not have to be cited? No citations are needed for your own original ideas or common knowledge. Common knowledge is what a typical adult in the United States would already know, such as New Year's Day is January 1st. What needs to be cited? Anything that did not come from you, anything from typical research materials such as the internet, databases, books, ebooks, articles, and so forth. But did you know that visual and auditory materials and ideas must also be cited? If information came from an infograph, a map, a chart, a graph, those things must be cited, as well as other people's artwork and auditory materials, such as YouTube videos, TED Talks, lectures, or presentations. There are three common myths about plagiarism that we're going to debunk today. Myth number one is the synonym system. If I put borrowed material into my own words, it's not plagiarism. This is false. Even paraphrased ideas must be cited. Myth number two is the links list. If I put a link in the back of the essay showing where I borrowed my ideas, it's not plagiarism. This is false. Even paraphrased material must be cited with in-text citations and proper works cited page or reference page entries, not just links. And finally, myth number three is the lonely quotes myth. If I put quotation marks around everything borrowed, this is not plagiarism. And this is false if there are no in-text citations and corresponding reference page entries. How can writers avoid plagiarism? When in doubt, cite it. If it's borrowed, cite it. Use a two-part corresponding citation system, such as an in-text citation and a works cited page entry in MLA format and get in the habit of creating four-part quote sandwiches. Introduce the quote or paraphrase, share it, cite it, and explain it. What are some ways to check for plagiarism before submitting assignments? One way is to review your draft with a writing center consultant. You can also run your draft through a plagiarism checker, such as Grammarly.com or Quitex.com. You can use a citation generator such as NightSite or the cite function in the college library databases. And finally, you can always check your college's Dean of Students citation guide. Today in review, we talked about types of plagiarism and how to avoid plagiarism. Thank you for joining us for Plagiarism 101.